There we go. Now she yelled at us. Happy Monday, everyone on Facebook. Give it a few minutes for everybody to jump on. Hi, guys. How was work for your Monday, Jen? Pretty dang insane. How was yours? About the same. That's no, every day. Slow down. Tyler said, as soon as my computer reboots, I'll be on. Hi, Michael. Hi, Miss Margie. Happy Monday, guys. Welcome. Sunshine State Race and Recap Show brought to you by Dayton Andrews. Make sure to hit them up for any of your automotive needs. Follow them on Facebook and make sure when you go, let them know Sunshine State Racing sent you. We'll wait a little bit. It's so mean, Braden. So we have a SSR group chat. And I said, hi, Johnny. I said, um, Sunshine State Racing just started their TikTok probably about a month ago now. We're 999 people. We need 1,000 to go live. And Brady. Oh, no, that's, that's YouTube, Ken. No, it's on um, TikTok too. Oh, TikTok has a live option? Yeah. So oh, yeah. Braden, I sent the group. I was like pretty excited over the, you know, 999 people have already liked it. Braden sent me his, he's got 20,000 plus followers and says, catch me if you can. Like, hello. Sounded like a personal challenge. Right? Hi, John. How are you? Aw, thank you, Mark. Appreciate you guys. Hi, Arpendel Speedway. <laughs> While we're waiting and we're talking of Arbor now Speedway, anybody wants to donate some grass seed, I'm sure Rex is going to need some for his grass after the for the tour destruction. That that monster truck, like it hit a number on that infield, right? <laughs> How much pride he takes in that infield, man. I I know they have good crowds, but it's got to hurt his feelings every time they bring that tour destruction, right? Well, I thought you were referring to me a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Thank you, Margie. Margie, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> any of you guys followed? Do you guys? Any of you guys noticed? Oh no, you guys weren't there Friday night at practice. We almost had a sacrifice the rabbit at 417 running down the front stretch during sportsman practice or open wheel practice Friday night. No. A rabbit in the on the track on the front stretch. Yeah. That's Joe went out to turn out the lights and it jumped out of one of the tires. <laughs> no. What about the, um, who was it at 417 that hit an animal? And it was like all up in the grill. No, wasn't that uh, Derek Pugh at New Smyrna? He hit a, hit, hit a, hit a, I thought it was New Smyrna. I don't know. Thank you, Margie. That should mean we hit a thousand. That's so exciting. Tyler. Shh, don't rub it in. Tyler said, you're trailing me too. I got 10, 10. Cody just got home. So my cat is automatically starting to talk to him through the door. Cody's going to fall in the shower again tonight. <laughs> um, Rex Struble. Yes. Rex Struble hit a black cat at Citrus on Halloween weekend. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> it was so bad. At that well, point... Do you just load up? I mean, <laughs> didn't he come back and finish like third that race though? I thought. I think he did. Dalton said there was a rabbit run, running around after the race this Saturday night too. That's crazy. SRQ racing. Dalton Ellis used to catch armadillos at the Soto. Oh, that's a car. That. that will definitely eat up a grill on a car. <laughs> there goes your airbox. That's Troy's excuse at the Soto. No, no. 
I used to see phantom objects on the racetrack. For you guys, Neil Wallace said he's seen that at 417 um, in his pits. Oh, Michael, I love you. He said, just checked. You're at 1002 now. Thank you, guys. It is over 110 before the show, so we can pass Tyler. Yeah, we got to pass Tyler. So y'all <laughs> make sure you're following Team SSR on TikTok. We'll worry or, about Braden way after Tyler. Yeah, I'm not catching Braden. I mean, Braden's killing it. Tyler has a th- wow. I'll do another. I'll do another <laughs> TikTok of me smashing a watermelon. That that got a lot of views. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find all of Troy's old race videos and put some. Yeah, there's not very many. <laughs> find, me a, find the one with me redecorating Rex's grass. Right. So for you guys that don't know, this is Troy McNabb. He is um, a very good friend of ours, for one. And I'm pretty sure I've known him my whole life. And he is also the tech guy now at 417 Southern Speedway. Um, not sure who bribed him to get back into racing, but, um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know who put my name in the hat for that job. I don't know, but lucky you. <laughs> um, well, before we get started, Troy, you're, man, Tyler. You're, safe. you're safe, Troy. Janet posted and we shared today looking for anybody wants to work. They're looking for Lots of employees at 417 Southern Speedway, but tech wasn't one of the positions posted. So I guess Troy's safe. <laughs> you feel it. safe, buddy. We, we, can, we can ban Tyler. I'm sure right. you see that comment. <laughs> yeah. Michael said, I'll go and follow Tyler to help. Um, Tyler said, I got pics of Troy after he knocked off the clip at DeSoto. I'm sure that's good for a few likes. Johnny said, hello, Troy. Um, and then our second person on i'm not sure i think we'll start with mason um mason lastra can you hear us yes how are you doing good so this is one of our legend car buddies um and he came home with a big win and great race by all of you guys down at 417 southern speedway on saturday first of all car count was absolutely amazing and then all through the field, you guys put on a show. I mean, what was it? The front five, front three for sure. But then the front five was passing each other back and forth. And it was it was really exciting to watch. Although I was freezing in the spotter stand, it was really exciting to watch. So talk- if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, congratulations. It was your first national qualifier win. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's awesome. So talk to us a little bit about your race and then we'll go into the history of, you know, kind of how you got involved and all that. Well, like at Citrus and 417, there's a lot of competitive cars and good drivers that are fun to race around and everybody races pretty clean up front. So <laughs> it's a fun race to be in. And I'm sure it's fun to watch. So I, I like racing around with those guys and I'm, I'm, in, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. So you and Sean English, um, and there was a couple other ones, and I don't have my list in front of me, but you guys put on quite a show. Um, you came home with the win, and then there was a huge wreck behind you. Yeah, I'm just I'm glad everybody's all right, and that's just I guess that's what happens. I mean, I've only been in ten legend car races, and luckily I haven't been in any wreck yet, so I'm just glad everybody's all right. Right. We'll take that as a win. So what got you started? What got you interested in wanting to race legends? Well, I raced go-karts for four years and then we kind of did all that we could in that. So we were looking for what to do next. And we started getting into, started hearing about legend cars and got one and started testing it in last July. And then my first race was a Halloween race uh, in October at Citrus. And I've run 10 races since that Saturday was my 10th race. That's awesome. So 10th race and first win at 417. How cool is that to get your first win already? That, that was awesome. I mean, we, we won two races at Auburndale, but there's a lot more cars at 417 and there's good competition at both tracks, but 417 is just, there's more competitive cars. So it's, it's fun to race at both tracks and 
So that, 417, that was pretty, that was a bigger win because I, I was racing around people that run up front at Citrus and run up front at every track. So that was, that was, that was the biggest one. So since you're newer, newish, um, and it being your 10th race and you've kind of got to travel a little bit, 417, Citrus, Arbindel, I'm not sure if you've done the dirt track yet, but do you have a favorite track so far that you kind of feel like you know how to drive it blindfolded already? I don't really know any of the tracks that well, but I know I like, I like driving Citrus the most and they're all pretty fun, but Citrus just kind of stands out because both ends of the track are different. So it's just more fun to learn and it's more fun to drive. Right. Did you get to race Citrus for Winter Nationals any? Uh, I did not. I know they had a huge card count there for Winter Nationals and, but man, you and the, the 60 and I'm bad with names, so I'm just going to do card numbers. The 60 and the 20 and Willie Cuddy, man, put on a good battle for the lead all, all night long. And Willie, I know, was going for back-to-back -back wins at 417, and I feel bad for him getting tied up in that, that wreck. But he went to the back and come back on strong, and you guys just put on probably one of the best shows of the night. And that's, it's, it's fun to race around those guys that all race really good, and they have fast cars, and they're good drivers, and they race each other clean. So it's, it's fun to race around those guys and know – it's going to be a good race and you're going to be able to race them hard and have a good finish. And take a minute and talk about the people that you have with you. Um, I know Chris Ham comes with you to all the races and talk about how important that is, you know, to have those guys that have so much experience in the legends kind of helping you through it. Yeah. None of this would be possible without Chris Ham because he's just <laughs> taught me so much and helped me so much getting up to speed and bringing fast cars to the track and, Without him, I, I wouldn't be up to speed already. So I really, I owe a lot of it to him and to my dad for giving me the opportunity to race and all my sponsors, Emily Motor Oil, uh, Excelsior Cigars, Sod Depot, Italiano Insurance. And I think that's it. And you're getting really good at those interviews already. That's what's so impressive about all you guys. How old are you, Mason? 16. Yeah, you guys kill it in interviews. Like, you're going to take my job soon, and I am perfectly fine with that. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> but, yeah, you guys do a really good job. So what's your schedule coming up for the rest of 2022? Oh, I know we're racing Saturday at Citrus and plan on doing all the little Gator series and the races at Auburndale. And we plan on going to Atlanta with Chris and my teammate Lacey in june so we're getting ready for that too yeah it's got to be a lot of fun racing with lacy too she does such an amazing job yeah it was good to have a, a good teammate to come in with too that was able to teach me a lot but she taught me basically everything on how to race at auburndale so it's good to, i have chris ham and mvp motorsports getting me a fast car and teaching me how to drive it and then i have teammates to learn from and see how they drive also right and it's, yeah. it's amazing while we talk about lacy your teammate for a minute Amazing how passionate she is about a, uh, their, their foundation and what all she can tell you about uh, diabetes awareness. And just, I mean, for a girl her age to be that in tune with it, I mean, I've interviewed her several times. She's just on top of it and uh, glad she's got a passion like that. But, man, she can wheel that legend car, too. Yeah, I know she's got a, got a new motor in it, too. So we're probably going to be – we should be pretty good. And Chris, Chris has got our cars really fast right now, so I'm looking forward to – having some teammates to race up front with too. Absolutely. He does a really good job with them legend cars and he's always fun to hang out with. If you haven't went and watched, looked at my album, every time I'm around any of my legend guys, they're making faces, they're doing hand gestures, they're being all crazy for the camera and I love it. Um, thank you, Tom, for the stars. Neil Wallace says, love it. 10th race, getting after it. Absolutely. So Huge shout out to you, man. You guys put on a show Saturday at 417. Can't wait to see it more of our tracks this year. And I really appreciate you taking time to come on and chat with us. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely, buddy. We'll have you on more this year. Congratulations on the win. Hold on. Thank before you. we let him go. Hold on. Um, Robert's got something. No, a shout out to all the sponsors. We didn't give him an opportunity. I meant he can't do this by himself. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. You forgot? <laughs> Robert, don't listen. He literally is like the husband you don't want that don't listen. <laughs> I was Go listening ahead. to the dogs barking in the background. Right. 
Go ahead and roll through your sponsors again, Mason. Oh, we have Emily Motor Oil, uh, Excelsior Cigars, Italiano Insurance, and Slot Depot of Tampa. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Congratulations on your win again, and good luck to you, you in the 2022 season. Thank you. See you, buddy. It is so much fun to watch these legend guys. Troy, did you get to watch any of the legends race? I did. I did. Um, and I actually, they had to have us tech them uh, the week before because the INEX guy couldn't get there. But uh, they they have such a competitive class. They're all so close together. Yeah. And I think they all, um, the week before they all qualified, which I think was one of the first times that they qualified. And they're very close. They're very close. So. I'm sorry excited with little gator that they're they're back in force now i meant almost to the days when kevin williams had the track and he had the the legends cars of southwest florida i meant a number and then they died off for a little bit but and they're coming on strong so many kids here in florida getting their start and tj to care and i think gavin graham are up going for trying to win some guitars this week up in nashville it's gonna be cool to follow those guys Absolutely. So <clears throat> just to kind of recap that, Mason ended up with the win. Sean English, Josh Dickens, Trevor Davidson, and Jared Hawley were top five. Um, we talked about the last lap wreck that collected quite a few of our little guys. Um, but man, right. what a show they put on. Like that top five went back and forth, back and forth multiple times. If you missed it, it's on Sunshine State Racing page to so make sure you go tune in and watch it but it was a lot of fun to watch super proud of those guys they always put on a great show 18 cars can't beat that thank you so much for the stars tom and neil appreciate you both robert you got anything no, i only let tyler recap his weekend at, at five flags There's a lot of excitement up there especially friday night we're just going to make Troy co-host the whole thing. He's going to be sick. Oh, okay. Well, well I, I thought he was going to he's not do on till 8.15. <laughs> it says 7.30. I don't know I how thought, to work these things. He's going to hang out with us. It's all right. I'll hang out. I don't know about excitement, but Friday night was interesting, to say the least. Um... Interesting slash disheartening. Tyler, you got you got alarms going off in the background. You gonna make it on us, buddy? I'm good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, one night he freaked me out. And I think it was the Soto or Citrus. His thing's beeping and lights are flashing. I'm like, what do you need me to do? He's like, I'm good. I'm like, all right, just checking. I'm good. I got this. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> um. Well, the clock out was awesome. I mean, there were 32 of them took time Friday. We lost one in practice, but he was well off the pace. So the way it started out, hectic lap one, they wanted up six of them on the front stretch. And yeah, and let's, let's talk about that for a minute because you and I were messaging back and forth and I was like, I could cry right now. Like Dustin Dunn, Anthony Cataldi, Eric White. And I know Eric doesn't live here, but he's still one of our Florida boys. You know what I mean? Like Whoa. we inherited him. He's our guy. Um, and literally like lap one could have had an absolute like heartbreak right then I, and there. I was almost involved in that one. Because I was sitting on the wall for the start as the pace car went by. I had turned to head over to turn one, and Dustin's car stopped right where I was sitting. Leave it to the wheels report to get you that close to the action. Right. <laughs> I got to do what I got to do for my people. <laughs> and Take thoughts and prayers to a. I haven't heard an update, but thoughts and prayers to Jet Nolan. I guess he he was hurt pretty bad and had to go see a doctor today with his back. So hope everything's okay with Jet. Yeah, he got hurt in that second lap, which I'm trying to keep my opinions to myself on that because of, well, 
I'll just leave it at that. He's trying to be PC right now, but Where do you so, for a Thursday show, Tyler, our uncensored okay. Thursday show, right? Okay. But um, the Where accident is- happened because there was a little bit of payback from one driver to another, and unfortunately, half the field got caught in it. Boris yeah, well, Vic, Jet Nolan, there was a bunch of them. Augie Quill, um, who else was up there? Cole Butcher, William Swallow. Um, when Taylor spot Jet hit him right in the driver's door. I mean, he had no, nowhere to go. And I just read an update from Donnie Wilson's page that that car is destroyed. Yep. I'm well, just waiting for um, Troy to throw somebody out in tech one night and get a little Sam Mayer, uh, Ty Gibbs action going on there. That was exciting, too. But what happened with that? I missed that. I didn't see that story. Man, can we just talk about the fact that Martinsville – Xfinity race was going on at the same exact time as Pensacola. And okay, both, who scheduled that? Both had ridiculous fireworks from lap one. And then at one point before the big pileup, maybe during the big pileup at Pensacola, there's a dang whole car field pileup at Martinsville. Like the entire field is stopped on track, involved in the accident. And then Pensacola is still going on, Martinsville. I mean, it was just brain overload because you don't keep your eyes off either one of them. And then at the end of the race, Ty Gibbs and uh, Sam Mayer got into a little Jesse Dutilly, Jeff Schofield match. Yeah, that was was interesting. Sam Mayer, Sam Mayer may or not have a black eye today. He does. You can see the pictures he posted. But Ty kept his helmet on. Come on. I don't agree with that. I don't either. Whatever. Yeah, if you guys throw a fist, take your helmet off. Let's fight fair. Right? Thank you, John, for the stars. Jason said, change your oxygen tank, Tyler. I'm good. (laughs) Neil said, six? Tell it, bro. (laughs) As far as Saturday, we lost another one in practice. Preston Feltier, he retired. They pulled out the backup that he won with in Washington, and he was still fourth quickest. And And uh, we had 24 clubs start the race, and it was pretty calm. And how about after Friday night, uh, just by coincidence, Dustin, Don, Eric White, and uh, Boris ended up at the same local establishment having some adult beverages trying to put their night away. Yeah, I saw that. They definitely needed it after a Friday night. And um, Webster actually brought his car up for Jet to race. Excuse me. And Jet wasn't clear, so they put um, Hudson Holder in the car. And on the third lap, it killed the wheel in. Oh, no. A flash. Yeah. Wasn't Hudson involved in the first wreck with Dustin? It was. Okay. And then, let's see. The race was pretty tame. A couple of spins. I feel bad for Michael Hine. I mean, with the redraw, he started on the pole, and he lost the motor on lap three. That's so disappointing. That's, that's a long way to travel to blow a motor. Right. Huge shout out to Stephen Nassie, though. Um, went yeah, back- man, he went back to Jet. I yeah. Tell you, they'll, they'll fire it on all, all cylinders. Yep. And everybody everybody remember, go vote for uh, Bubba Pollard got the XRX race at Pensacola. So you can still vote Stephen in to get a chance to race with those guys at Nashville. So yeah, Bubba, more Bubba, now had, need votes. Bubba had a second and a fourth. There was a couple guys that were close, but he sealed the deal. How cool would it have been to get one of our low budget, like underfunded guys in the SRX? That would have been cool. Right? Just an opportunity they would never have otherwise. Might have had a shot at Friday night, not it happened. Right. 
I mean, it was an eventful weekend in Pensacola, and it had a derby type feel to it. The only thing we were missing was Ricky Brooks. Right. How did how did it, <laughs> how did Colin do? I mean, I know he went up. I didn't hear much about him. I guess he didn't have too great a luck, but did he at least survive? Uh, he, he pulled off both nights, but the cars in one piece. Hey, after Friday night, if you can load your car up and then try to learn one piece with all four wheels on it, I'm going to say that's a good night. Funny you say that. We had a pure stop. Almost get taken out after the races. How'd that happen? One of the haulers was trying to make the corner get out, <laughs> and he decided to drive the trailer down back to the stop, knock the whole back of the body off. Oh, wow. And I've never seen Three guys run down the back stretch so fast. <laughs> Stop this all. It was um, it's quite comical. That's about after the open wheel modified race, right? Saturday at 417, Dalton Nelson, one legged driving the gator around, almost rips the corner panel off of coat, um, Chad Rutherford's open wheel. Jesus. But yeah, I don't know who's all it was, but. He cleared the wall. He didn't even check off the side. He drove that trail down the back of that pure stock and knocked the bumper cover. Spoiler, drunk lid off. They weren't happy. Nice. Where are you going to be this weekend, Tyler? In Citrus for the Supers. Awesome. I'll be here for the next three weeks. And then I go to Nashville. Awesome. So we'll have Will's report from a little bit of everywhere. And I'll, I'll be on after Nashville, but I'll have to find a, a bar somewhere to broadcast because I'm staying up for a few days. Sounds so, good. Don't fall off any curbs. I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, we appreciate you. I'm glad you made it home safely. Catch up on some rest. Yeah. I'll be all see you Citrus Saturday. All righty. That's Tyler's is, contact oh, with our oh. Speed Racer Photos Wheels Report. Shout out to him for always being able to get us some awesome photos and cover tracks we're not able to get to. We appreciate it so much. Um, Speaking somebody, of photos, I see Jen walking around with this awfully fancy camera, Robert. She's got some pretty good photos. She probably she's probably hiding all the incriminating ones somewhere. I am. I'm gonna have, have, we'll have to have a teach me a few lessons. <laughs> I need all to teach me, dang it. <laughs> like I haven't even started playing with settings and all that. I just want to get pitch shots and see the kids playing with the cars and all the good stuff. Riley did take a couple of the on track photos this weekend. I didn't take it, I don't think I took any on track photos. Um, other than victory lane, because I wasn't sure if Robert was going to make it, but everything I got was just pitch. Yeah. I, I yeah. showed up late and luckily Jen was right down there. I'm, I didn't see her coming down. I was there trying to get a picture. Next thing I know, there's this camera over my shoulder. Click, 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 click. I'm like, who's that? Jen, are you going to go Um, I'm not sure. Arbonnell are 417 this weekend. Well, I need here, Jen. If somebody goes to Auburn, yeah. they'll need winner's pictures for the Wheelman series. Okay. No worries. Appreciate it. No problem, buddy. I think Joe no. may be on the channel too, Jen. Yeah, I think Joe's joining us. We'll have Joe and Troy at the same time. Joe, you on? Yeah. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Good. We got Joe Gentry and Troy McNabb. Double header gonna come at you guys my 417 group it was so good to get back down south this weekend yeah we was wondering where you been <laughs> joe said he was gonna divorce me yeah <laughs> troy had missed me too he just don't admit it i told you you didn't you just avoided me until like halfway through the damn <laughs> uh, i I heard that a Janet's villain threatened by Terry Price, so he's got competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I didn't even get to see Janet this weekend. She was running around crazy busy, as always. 
Yeah. I think this week was the first time I saw her in, in the back. All you know, between the time we got there and the time we left. Yeah, I didn't see her at all. I know she's always crazy busy, but I've really, honestly, other than when I went down on the front stretch to take the pictures because I didn't know if Robert was going to be there, um, I don't think I left the spotter. Oh, I did. I did. I went down one time during features, but that was it. So I was up there until it was over and I was frozen. It wasn't cold up there? Slightly. That Pretty wind, sure. that wind there, man, it gets chilly up there. Whew, that wind was brutal. No took refuge in the prompt towing tow truck. Right. And uh, that wind was yeah. brutal, but man, it was a, a great crowd that fought the weather and uh, yes. great by the, the legends and the open wheel modified wind put on a great night of racing. And shout out to the Crown Vicks. There was a ton of them. They put on quite a show as well. It was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it was a good weekend overall. Those, uh, those guys always put on a good show. Um, open wheel guys did real good. I was uh, really clean, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I was happy with it. Um, you know, I think we'll do some more of them races for them guys if they want. And we'll reach out to them and see what they have to say. And uh put on some bigger races for them if we can get 2021 20, cars. Yeah, so I really honestly, and no offense to our open wheel guys, it's just with that many cars, I kind of expected more carnage, but there really <laughs> wasn't. You know what I mean? Like there really wasn't, there wasn't even really accidents. It was mostly like mechanical no. failures. Yeah, there's some bumping and tagging going on, but most part was pretty clean. Um, like I said, they, uh, they drove a hard race and uh, it was a good race between, you know, all of them. They're, they're racing all over the track, whether it was, you know, for 10th or 11th or, you know, first or second. So. Yeah, they were definitely putting on a show through the field. Um, it was great to watch. It was a lot of fun to see that many open wheels back out because it's, I can't tell you the last time I've seen that good of a car count of open wheels. That's probably been one of the biggest field of open wheels since the last big Eddie Braun race and, it was nice to see them all come together, and I was really impressed. Dylan Bigley, I mean, I know he can, he's a wheelman and drives the Super and does really well in the truck, but first time in open wheel, those things are a little scary. The wheels touch, and, man, he was right in there fighting for that win. Yeah. With no radio. Yeah. So let's talk for a minute. I have a question. So we stopped around the halfway point. Was that a planned break? Yeah, we uh, it was a planned break because I know um, a lot of them cars got smaller fuel cells in them. So I knew um, there were some that could make 100, some that probably run out around 75. So we decided to just stop them and let them check air pressure and fuel them up at 50 on the back stretch and then go. Awesome. And everybody did really good as far as staying in line and doing what they need to do, get it done, get it over with, and get back racing. Yeah, yeah, those guys, they did a, did a good job, man. They're in and out and uh, <laughs> got, got their stuff adjusted and go. <laughs> Troy had to laugh because Dalton just commented on Robert's, um, what Robert was saying earlier and said, I had to hit something Saturday night since I wasn't racing. <laughs> the boot on his foot wasn't enough. Right. <laughs> but I want to, Joe, a huge shout out to you and Janet and the staff there at 417. Once again, uh, it was Dalton's mom, Cindy, that ended up winning the 50-50, $667. What a 50-50 by everybody. But you guys, a lot do the, where you guarantee so much money to the winner and 500, and it really puts it up there. But a huge shout out to you guys for doing that. You don't have to do it on a normal race weekend, but always making it exciting for the fans and they, uh, it's nice to see the tracks doing that. Yeah, I think the last few 10, 50, 50, 10 weeks has all been uh, 500 to 1,200 to up to a couple grand. So, I mean, it's a uh, <laughs> lady walked out here with almost 2,000 bucks there a few weeks ago. I was it's, like, not a bad, it's not a bad yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> what was the 50, 50 at the big league race? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> That was some Daytona tickets that Sunoco gave away, and that was over two thousand um, dollars. So it was a bunch of stuff, man. They gave all kinds of stuff away there, but it was it was a ton of stuff, a lot of cash. I'll give a, 
I'll give a shout out to Joe too, because every time I turn around, like ask Joe a question, he's gone doing something, you know, right. whether it's fixing the lights or, you know, dealing with somebody, but, you know, for anybody that thinks that these guys don't, uh, that this job's easy for anybody there is, it's not, <laughs> it's really not. And that's one thing, yeah. shout out to you guys, because you guys treat our racers like family down there and you're going around and you're making sure people have what they need and everyone's doing good. And they're constantly coming up with questions and, you know, you just take the time to always answer them, respond, you know what I mean? So that means a lot to everyone. Yeah. We try to treat uh, everybody the same, whether, you know, driving a, you know, a $500 car or a $50,000 car, you know, uh, they all still put in hard work to come race every week. Um, no matter what their budget is, they all, you know, I've always been trying to treat everybody equal, you know, whether, like I said, driving an old car or a brand new car, you know, they still put in the time working uh, to try to get it done. And you put on a uh, Billy Bigley Jr. Got him back behind the wheel last weekend in the Joe Gentry on street stock. It was nice to see him back out there. It's probably been over a year since he's been in the car. Yeah, that car, that's been a good little car. Uh, it don't matter who we put in it, it. It runs pretty decent. You know, Billy got to drive it. He'll drive the next few races. Dylan, Andrew Jackson, they all had fun driving it. So <laughs> sooner or later, someone will buy it. <laughs> right. It was definitely a lot of fun to watch. I'm going to read through some of the comments real quick. Watching from Ontario, Canada. Um, Tyler Sontag said to Dalton's comment, good thing I wasn't there. Neil Wallace said, love the track in the facility. Um, yeah, so we had a ton of our Crown Vicks there. We had a ton of oh, our legend cars. Crown Vicks, and what a huge turnout with them on really short notice. I mean, I don't think, Joe, you guys didn't put out that you had them until Thursday night. And they had, what, 14, 15 of them there on two-day turnaround. You know, and I got to give a lot of that credit to the Cody, man. He called me up and um, called me up. I think the day day before we put it out, he's like, hey, man, if I can get 10, 13 cars, can you pop us on schedule? And uh, so I told him, yeah, you know, it's uh, so I took off the outlaw modifieds because, you know, they've just not been good participation with them. And we put the crown Vicks on and I think we ended up with 18 of them. So and Cody actually reached out to all them and uh, and got them to come come down. So I got, you know, kudos for him, Cody, you know, for calling all them guys, getting rounded them up last minute. Yeah, great job to all of our Crown Vicks for coming down because, man, those guys, I don't even care if it's practice. They're putting on a show. I've seen them three wide in practice before, and it's fun. It's just a lot of fun to watch, and it's a fan favorite. Um, so shout out to all our Crown Vic guys. You guys put on a show, yeah. and it was a lot of fun. I've never that raised I ever did. I think that would be one class I'd try. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a good all-around class. Robert, we like can make that happen. happen. I don't know that I want to make it happen, Troy. I just said if I was ever try, that would be it. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm sure somebody watching your show now, uh, next Crown Vic race, will we'll have you in that thing for practice or something. I, I, I can I have a feeling somebody will reach out to you and put you right in one, Robert. Right? <laughs> All right. Yep. So let's, let's talk I'll about... Pop, I'll case put you right up in that joker. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he would. <laughs> so let's take a minute and talk about um modified feature those guys put on a show invert was five um right. invert yeah i think it was five yeah. yeah five or seven yeah it was either three five or seven so it wasn't uh wasn't a real big invert you know we try to keep keep the inverts to a to a, a happy medium let's just say so right. um it was a good race all in all. Like I said, the, all those guys, was they're racing the first few or they're racing uh, for, you know, 10th and 11th, they're all just racing. There's all over the racetrack. So, which was pretty cool, you know, wherever yeah. you look together. Dylan confirmed it was five. Thank you, Dylan. I can't remember what I did yesterday, much less Saturday night. But um, so <laughs> Jason Lester jumped to the lead early on, put on a great show up front. Um had some competition. He had Dylan Bigley at one point side by side with him. He had Chad Rutherford at one point side by side with him. Cody Stickler, of course. 
they really ran a really good, clean race, hard side-by-side -side battles for long times throughout the field. Um, and then we had a late race restart. Cody Stickler took the lead, was able to take the win. Lester finished second and then Bigley third. And then we'll go into what you guys teched. I think, I think they, uh, Cody's just, I mean, Cody's a mastermind behind whatever he does, but Doug Moff had that car ready to go in RRD and Cody just saved the tires. I mean, it was obvious that Jason, I think, wore the tires out quicker than Cody did. He was kind of just sitting back waiting on them. But I really would have liked to see what Dylan would have done if they wouldn't have had that flat midway through the race and didn't have to fight his way back through there and probably use up more tires. But man, Cody's just great at, at saving those tires and putting on that show at the end. Yeah, you got it. You know, Cody, he's a, he's a really good driver with every drives. You know, you watch him over the years and uh, it doesn't matter what car he's in his own or, you know, when he was in the 45, he was fast and he's, you know, you got to know he'll be fast and Doug stuff um, and Johnny. So, I mean, those guys, you know, they're like, they know how to do those modifieds and uh, they're always fast wherever they go. But I mean, Jason, you know, I'm sure when he found out Cody was on his, tail that uh he drove the wheels off that car and cody was just sitting back letting him burn up his stuff because he knew <laughs> knew it was just a matter of time where he was going to get him on a restart or you know run around the outside so and i kind of feel like that's a disadvantage for the person that leads the most laps because when we have these restarts that leader wants to stay in the lead you know what i mean so he's got different people coming up and battling him for second and so you kind of have to race a little bit harder when you're the leader to kind of keep your way up there <clears throat> where the person in third, fourth, fifth can kind of just, you know, fall back to the bottom and let it ride for a little bit. Yeah. In the same respect, you can't just let it fall. You can't just let them fall back, uh, you know, too far. They'll get in there huh. and, you know, yeah, won't be able to catch up, you know, being a short yeah. track. That race would have went green. It had been totally different, you know, may have been Absolutely. a different result. Yeah, so it's um when they get going, uh, you know, when they started started running the, the the greens for a while, you can you could see the guys just you know picking and choosing when they wanted to pass and stuff. So, you know, I think uh, I think both crews are working pretty decent for most of them. You know, there's a lot of side by side racing, so um, that was good too. But Cody, yeah, he's uh he's the master of just saving tires and kind of waiting for opportunity. You know, he's been doing this a long time and. If you watch him drive, he just he just waits. Watch his GoPro one time when if he lets you put it on YouTube or something. It's uh, how he passes and stuff. Yeah. Pretty smooth. It works. So we got our next guest going to come on in a few minutes, but let's give Joe and Troy a minute to talk about tech and then what happened in tech with the open wheel modifieds. But I'll let you both talk a little bit on now Troy's on board, Joe, so you don't have to spend all night in, in tech and give you a little help there. But it seems like mm -hmm. a, uh, you guys have really been doing well at giving everybody a good look over and making sure everybody's straight up. Well, that's We've what we're trying. trying to do. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's a, that's probably the worst job in the world. Anybody will tell you because uh, they, they either love you or they hate you. And then, uh, well, you know, they could love you one day, hate you the next, but then they'll love you again and, <laughs> and hate you. But it's a, uh, it's a, it's a hard job, you know, because, you know, it's their job to go fast and push push it to the limit it's our job to catch them so it's um you know it's a two-way street there so i, I agree everybody. i mean the hardest thing i do during the week is figure out what i want to tech you know on the weekends and i'll start tonight and sit there and go okay well what are we going to look at and i came up with the, you know what we were doing after the modified race with five laps to go and i had no intention of doing that before before the race or before the weekend it just you know kind of hit me with five to go and i said well you know and joe and janet you know they asked me to come up here and do the job so you know that's what i'm going to do and you know whether some guys like it some guys don't but uh for the most part i've gotten a positive response from most people on it and so Troy, Joe, let's be honest, you're used to the love him or hate him type of attitude, right? Oh, I don't care who likes me or doesn't like me. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't put on this earth to make friends. I was, right? That, that's just a bonus. Exactly. So, Joe, I know you and Janet got a uh, 
American Racer, Southern Race Fuels, and your great staff that helps you guys every week. But who do you want to give a shout out to? Anybody I left out that helps make you guys put on shows every weekend? Yeah, I just got a shout out to all you guys. I mean, our staff, um, you know, our racers, our fans. I mean, you guys, you know, sometimes we've had a couple slow shows, but man, them stands have been packed, you know, and, uh, you know, our fans are, we got some good solid fan base and uh, everybody, you know, you guys, Sunshine State, you guys doing a job and, uh, you know, you know, everybody who we associate with vendor wise, um, you know, drivers, teammates, you know, I've seen guys helping each other out. And so, you know, they all help each other. They might bicker a bit at the end of the night, but, you know, the next weekend they're right back at it, friends again. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Part of it. Toy, I'll let you go through that comment. <laughs> I mean, the transmission rule is what it is. Um, a lot of the guys have come to me and asked me, you know, can I do this with the body? Can I do that? And, you know, and I've been, I've looked at some of the bodies and, you know, Saffircone's RRD is building a killer car. They're, they're beautiful cars. They look like, they all look like a Batmobile, but you know, it, it is a modified class. And I, I can tell you right now, I asked Dylan as I'm laying underneath Dalton's car, looking at his transmission, I asked Dylan, I said, this thing's got a motor in it. Doesn't it? He goes, Oh yeah. Well, that's great. And they can, almost have an almost unlimited motor rule but you know at some point in time we've got to tame what some of these guys are spending on these cars i mean you know somebody somebody asked uh after all that was done about the um you know these three thousand dollar lightweight transmissions that look like a stock transmission which is what's supposed to be in a car and uh <laughs> easy Terry uh you know it's I wouldn't I don't think I'd even allow that transmission even though it's um you know it looks to be and it functions like a like a stock transmission but you know a, a gun drilled shaft you know is, is is too much you know it's just something that you know not Doug Moss not just so got busted for it the week before it uh New Smyrna or two weeks before so no uh, it was uh, for a uh, straight cut gears. Um, he had ordered tranny and straight cut gears, and uh, he knew that he had oh, to change right. it. I, yeah, ordered one. They actually popped it in the car, didn't look at it, and it was the same one as he had. So that's uh, but their mistake. They they owned up to it. They knew. So I mean, they read the rules. Um, Johnny and Doug and all them. They read them. They know. But they also know there's no gun drilled uh, shafts and stock three-speed or four-speed transmissions out there they know that too they just didn't think we'd check but to happen to check it and i get it so um question for the ones of us that are completely dumb when it comes to that what is the benefit to that is there less a rotating weight that? okay so you know a lot of the motors spin up faster a little easier to shift um, that's what that's what I was initially looking for with the straight cut gears, and I remember back in the back of my head somebody saying to me about a tail shaft on the transmission, so I just had to pull the yokes off everybody's transmissions, and I didn't just look at them. You know, I had a pick, and I went in there because some guys will try to weld them or put silicone in there, and uh, yeah. you know, it was it was. I mean, I, as soon as I looked at the transmission, you know, I knew it was, and I've got you know, I've got nothing against anybody, and I've tried to be as neutral and unbiased as possible and i think i've done a great job of that you know towards the racers and you know the rules are rule so i enforce the rules and you know i'm the bad guy everybody knows that and you know i got no problem with it it's just that's the way the rules are yeah and honestly um there wasn't any it didn't seem like any hard feelings i'm sure those guys will get their stuff faster and get it get it fixed and be back for the next race they did a great job well, on track. No issues. You know what I mean? On Jason's done. Jason's done. Uh, you know, I haven't really watched Jason race very much over the years. There was a few YouTube videos that, you know, from other tracks. But, you know, Jason, I think, has done a superb job of driving the car um, and and keeping his composure about it. You know, even, even after, I, you know, he found out that, you know, that was illegal. 
there was, you know, there was no cussing. There was no yelling. There was no, you know, Ty Gibbs stuff going on, but right. it was, you know, he kept his composure and, you know, they'll come back and they'll be just as fast. Um, but he's done a great job as far as, as racing. And, you know, Jason Allen made a comment about the way uh, um, Cody, Cody does his restarts and he's absolutely right. I watched every restart and Cody, he, that is exactly what he does. He timed those restarts perfectly. Yeah. And Cody's been in the modifieds for quite a while and he is the best of the best as far as running these restarts. And, you know, he's really good at 417, but there's not a lot of places he goes where he's not good. You know what I mean? So at one point or another to be schooled by a guy like Cody Stickler's, it's a good thing. Step it up. Yeah. Great. I don't care what he says. When he knew Cody was behind him, he was driving. He was driving because he knew Cody was behind there. So right? he uh, wheels off that 45, and, and Cody just sat back and watched him burn his junk up. Yeah. So great show by our modified guys. Not a lot of carnage. We had a lot of mechanical. And, and, and hats off real quick, too, to Dylan, because he did, he did go to the back. And, I mean, he did one heck of a job to, you know, just pick them up one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And I was like. I, I was impressed, you know, and I've watched Dylan race since he was in a, a first time I saw Dylan race, he landed up, landed up on his roof. I, you know, when he was a little kid, and I, I was impressed with that. Me too. It was pretty impressive and it was a lot of fun to watch, um, especially to watch him come up through the field. I think Chad Rutherford was the one, of course, I was the most heartbroken for because he ran up there in the top all night long thought they were going to have a front stretch finish and then he breaks so yeah poor, yeah and jimmy frazier and them a couple of them guys they just had yeah. bad nights you know, mechanical failures it sucks for them those guys really dedicated to the sport spend a lot of money on uh, and to have a mechanical failure it happens but i mean it sucks that both of them both of the cars you know went down the six car and the five car so yeah, definitely. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you guys this weekend, Twin 50 for the Sportsman. And a, uh, thank yeah. you guys for taking time tonight. And we can't wait to see everybody this Saturday night. Yes, sir. Look forward to it. See you, all See you Saturday. See you, guys. And then I think Tim, Tim's on already, Jim. All righty. We're running behind today, aren't we? Tim Sozio joining us um what a great weekend you had yeah for sure thanks for uh thanks for inviting me on absolutely so you guys have been doing a really great job everywhere you go you've been right there in it and then to come home with a big win at new smyrna how does that feel uh yeah i mean it felt pretty good um obviously it wasn't the uh you know same caliber of field that we've been racing against you know with the wheelman series and stuff but um, we, we beat a couple of really good cars at New Smyrna with the, uh, 25 and the seven, um, you know, they, they pretty much could, you know, hang with anybody over there. So it felt good to outrun them and, and, uh, finally get the monkey off our back and, and get that first win, uh, with, uh, Daniel and, and the first win in the, uh, sportsman in like five years. So it's been a while. That's awesome. It's going to be a good confidence builder going into this weekend with the success you've had in the wheelman series. I mean, getting a lot of top fives and top three finishes. To get that win, maybe going in this weekend to Arbondale, uh, be right there fighting, hopefully for the win in the Wheelman Series. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it will uh, hopefully build build some momentum. Uh, like you said, we've been running, you know, pretty much top five, uh, pretty much every race that we've been in this year. So um, we've been knocking on the door, and and hopefully this will, uh, you know, kind of help us close one of those out, and and maybe be able to to break through with a win in the Wheelman Series. So. And you had to race this weekend without your your right hand man Daniel Webster there. So how was that? I know Phil stepped up, jumped in, helped out. He's been helping you guys out a lot. But how'd that go? Yeah, I mean uh, Daniel was up in Pensacola, so um, Phil subbed in for him, and and he's been helping us out uh, along with Daniel at at the last few races. Uh, you know when he wasn't racing, so um, he did a good job, and uh, we didn't really have to do much to the car. Uh, Daniel set it up at the shop and and it was pretty much perfect off the trailer we didn't really make any adjustments or anything um 
and you know Phil's Phil's got a perfect record now so uh he'll have to keep that going now if you start to have any bad luck are you kicking Daniel out this weekend <laughs> just have him still uh, there like what's the deal I how mean, superstitious are you for some reason we seem to have been having better luck when he's been uh not at the track so i don't know we'll have to see how that goes and you it's guys look- really done a good job getting around arvindale you seem like you've really <laughs> taken to that place so how do you feel getting around there i know it's a crazy crazy racing as far as it seems like the wheelman's a little bit crazier when they're at arvindale but how do you feel about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up racing there. I raced a lot in the pro trucks there. Um, basically, when I was learning how to run, you know, race around people. So I feel really comfortable around there. It's been one of our best tracks the last couple of years. Um, we set fast time there a couple of weeks ago and, and ran really good in the race. So, um, you know, I, I feel pretty good. It's just, you know, it's, it's really hard to pass. Um, everybody's really fast. Everybody's a good driver that you know, is racing over there. So uh, it's just a matter of, you know, getting the track position, having some luck on your side and being able to make your way towards the front, kind of avoiding some of the carnage and stuff. Hopefully there won't be any, but, um, you know, you just kind of got to see how it plays out. And, uh, you know, I feel pretty good going into it. So we'll see how it goes. I couldn't let this interview end without getting uh, Daniel Webster and Mike Brezahan and myself excited Let's talk about your day job a little bit. How crazy have those phones been going since the Miami Dolphins have made some moves? And I'm super excited for my tickets next year. I think we got a got a chance next year. Yeah, yeah, I know you're a Dolphin season ticket holder. So, um, yeah, it's been crazy ever since uh, we traded for Tyreek Hill. Um, you know, the phones have been ringing off the hook. We've been doing really well sales-wise. So, um, it, it should be an exciting year. We have an exciting team, and – uh, we're looking forward to hopefully making a run to the playoffs this year. So we'll see how it goes. It should be yeah, I got, here for you. I got a call from my rep the other day and she said, hey, if you need any extra tickets, you better let me know. They're going to be hard to come by this year. And just that alone made me excited. Uh, I've had them over 20 years now and it's been a, a long time. I think since probably we signed Sue many years ago, that it's been this exciting. So I'm, I'm looking forward to season coming up. For sure. Yeah, definitely. It'll be awesome. And, uh, if you do need an extra ticket, you better buy it now. So <laughs> that's what I've been told. All right. So personal question. Um, I, your your family always watches the live feeds. If they're, I'm sure, your biggest supporter. Last time you guys raced Arvindale, Phil, I think it was, he had pneumonia, wasn't feeling good, was under the weather. How's it going? Um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's doing good. Uh, he was at the race the other night. He's my grandfather. So, um, he was excited to, to see us win. Um, we only live about 20 minutes. My parents do, uh, from New Samara Speedway. So he was able to get out there and, uh, you know, everything's going good. So. Awesome. We love him and we love seeing him at the track. So I'm glad he's feeling much better. For sure. For sure. Me too. So you're planning on racing all of Wheelman series, planning on venturing out any more to New Smyrna 417, any of the other tracks? Yeah, we're for sure running uh, the rest of the Wheelman races. Um, and then other than that, you know, we're kind of just going week by week, seeing what's racing and then kind of uh, picking where we want to go. But yeah, we're definitely going to try and make it down to 417 this year for sure. Um, I love racing there. So we're going to try and make it there. Um, and then, you know, maybe hit some of the... Uh, other races at New Smyrna, maybe if they have like a 50 lap or, or some of the bigger races. So we'll see what happens, but definitely all the wheelman races for sure. Awesome. Well, really excited for you guys. Hope you get a good win. Um, and definitely a good finish if you don't get the win this weekend, because Arvindale has definitely been a good place for you. Um, let's take a minute and talk about the people that help you and your sponsors. For sure. Yeah. Um, first off, got to thank my wife for uh, letting me go to the racetrack when we want to go race. So I uh, appreciate all her support. Then I got to thank uh, my mom and dad for, you know, also helping us out, get to the racetrack every time we go race. Um, I got to thank Daniel Webster, obviously, uh, before, you know, he started helping us a couple years ago. We took a couple years off racing when I, I moved away to Texas for a year and then uh, just didn't race. And when we got back into racing again uh, a couple of years ago we were so terrible I was ready to quit and then uh, he started helping us out and we kind of turned everything around so definitely got to thank him um 
Also got to thank Larry and Diane with uh, Delirious Trucking. Um, they helped us out quite a bit last year and, and this year. So um, have been a big supporter. And then other than that, just everybody else that goes out to the racetrack with us um, every week, a lot of family members and we all like to have a good time. So, uh, you know, it's always a good get together when everybody's out there. So that's pretty much it. Absolutely. Well, look forward to seeing you guys this weekend, seeing you race out at Arvindale and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Congrats on the win and we'll talk to you this weekend. All right. See you guys. Thank you. What another great show, gentlemen. These hours just seem to fly by. Right. I feel like that was the shortest hour ever. So sorry to keep you guys so long. Hey, Speedy. Speedy pop back up. And just a heads up to everybody, be sure and tune in tomorrow night at seven o'clock. We got a special show with Rick Williams, Ronnie Bacello, and Mike Howell for sure. We may have some other guests coming on. We're going to do a little bit of history and talking about Hialeah Speedway, some of the great rivalries, their favorite memories, and just talking about the good old days. Listen, let's be honest, we're going to be us a lot and we're going to hear a lot of good stories. So make sure y'all tune in and throw your questions out there to these guys. Um, and make sure, just to recap, you contact Dayton Andrews, Clearwater or St. Pete location if you need any automotive needs um, and let them know SSR sent you because they're one of our biggest supporters and we appreciate them so very much. Speedy, you got anything? You're muted. Maybe. <laughs> Tyler said we need to get Judson O'Neill on one of these shows. Yes, we do. Those, um, both of the boys, actually, they're so talented and so smart. And it's so cool to see the passion in these young guys. Um, speaking of young guns, shout out to Colton Bettis. Hope he's feeling okay. Tough hit over the weekend, but what a great young man that is. I think I got a little bit. You're working. There we go. You got anything, Speedy? I don't think so. Are Robert, you got anything? Robert's muted. Well, that's it for us. We'll see party tomorrow night. Yep. That's it for us at Sunshine State Race, and we appreciate you guys tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow night for one of our Hialeah shows, and have a great rest of your Monday. See you at Toy's Truck. See ya.